And just so you know. Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast. I'm Ross Benjamin, and like every Thursday, it's our NFL edition, and I'm joined, like every Thursday, by Mr. Doug Upstone from DocSports.com, one of the finest handicappers in the country. Doug, how are you today? I'm doing excellent, Ross, and I got a little uh, Christmas uh, cheer here with a little Santa on a shirt here today to go along with a red sweater, ho, ho, ho. And uh, so we're ready to fire up some football. Uh, we got the bowl game starting this weekend. We got NFL, and we got we got games, two games on Saturday. Looks like a pretty good weekend, Ross. Yeah, I mean, a sweater in Arizona. What's up I, with that? little chilly these days. Well, you know, once that thermometer gets below 60 around here and you've been here as long as I have, the uh, got to got to dress accordingly. You know, it's it's all the people that are coming in from other places that are wearing shorts now. Yeah. I mean, 57 in Western New York in December. I'm putting <laughs> on a tank top for crying out right. loud. I, I believe you. A lot of talking points in the NFL right now, Doug. Um Right off the top, this Urban Meyer story has been flooding the news, the sports news, that is, and uh, for good reason. And we don't want to beat it to death, but one thing we did notice uh, off air when we were talking is uh, this line went from three and three and a half. Well, it opened at three and a half, Doug. And I was talking to Chip Cherimbus about this yesterday. I said, doesn't it strike you funny? This is before the firing. I says, here we have a 2 and 11 Jacksonville team. It's an absolute internal mess on and off the field. Um, and they're a three and a half point favorite, not only a favorite, but they added the hook to the field goal. You know, uh, it just, to me, they're giving you the winner here. And then they fire uh, Meyer last night, a press conference at one o'clock in the morning, Doug, Eastern time. That is, of course, that's, you know, that's right. 10 o'clock your time, but still that's late. Right. Um, and, uh, I just looked now and Jacksonville's up to a five and a five and a half point favorite. What do you make of it? Well, I, the, I, I honestly don't even have a good answer for you. It doesn't make it other than it doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, maybe the team will, will be more calm. Okay. Based on, on, you know, and be happy because even Lawrence mentioned yesterday in a press conference, Trevor Lawrence, I should say, he mentioned yesterday that, you know, that uh, things just need to calm down here. And he goes, I realize in the NFL that there's a, a lot more uh, different things going on. Uh, so with that being the case, things, you know, things have just changed and, and they needed some, let's just say, some quiet time, okay, to get things settled down. So I think that's kind of the big thing. But beyond that, um, I don't know. I don't know of anything happening with Houston, to tell you the truth. You know, that maybe some COVID issues that have come up there that I'm not aware of. Uh, I'll be honest, Ross, not a game I'm looking at this weekend. <laughs> yeah, uh, I thought that might, might have been a call from Seattle's front office cluing you in on what's going on. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll try to make sense of it, if I may. Um, look. You read all everything that's been going on over the last couple of weeks. He was not a well-liked coach. There's no two ways about it. And now more is coming out. Um, he was dehumanizing. He was um, very belligerent to not only his players, his coaching staff, and uh, people in the organization. So uh, that created a negative atmosphere beyond belief. Uh, you can't treat pro players like you do college players. And that's why a lot of the, well, I shouldn't say a lot of the time, because you look at Cliff Kingsbury, he's actually a better NFL head coach than he was at Texas Tech. Um, but you can't treat NFL players the way you treat college players as a head coach anyway. Um, it doesn't work. Um, from what I understand, he treated players at Florida and within that building the same way in at Ohio State, the same way uh, that, that he did at, at this stop in Jacksonville, which is just, a, what was it, a 13, 14-game stay at Jacksonville? I yep. think it's the shortest NFL tenure since Bobby Petrino in Atlanta and Lou Holtz when he was with the Jets in 1976 or so. Uh, in any event, um, this isn't going to be a quick turnaround. 
in terms of a culture, but uh, Daryl Bevel takes over in an interim basis, and he's a very he's very well liked within the locker room. So it can't help but improve the culture. Now Jacksonville's got issues. There's no two ways about it. But Houston has just as much issues, Doug. They can't score. Uh, they've had some horrible decisions as a franchise in recent years, uh, especially under Bill O'Brien. Uh, so to me, for teams that are this bad, for one bad team to be this sizable of a favorite over the other bad team, I would tend to go with the favorite in, in this situation. That's just my take. Anyway, any other thoughts before you get to your free pick, Doug? Yeah, well, just uh, the, you know, obviously, well, two things. Real, one real quick, I mentioned COVID. Uh, you know, that's, it's a big deal now. I mean, and, and the lines are reflecting it almost immediately. Um, do you, should you overreact to it? I, I think for the most part last year, we, uh, we didn't. You know, you took it for what it was. You you understood who the players are. And if the team is still really good or really bad, I think you just, you kind of have to go, you know, with your gut instinct as to what you think is, is going to happen here. So I think that's one thing uh, to how to look at some of this. Uh, I know myself, I had no problems with it last year at all when it occurred. You just, you know, maybe dialed back a couple of plays, you know, each and every week, but that was about it. And the other thing I just wanted to throw out there is that, you know, now that we're into the last month of the season or four weeks, if you will, is that you're going to get a lot of Team, a lot of games with double digit spreads with teams either fighting to make the playoffs already in the playoffs against teams that uh, got the got the engine running in the car as the game is ready to start uh, waiting to go home. So it's a matter of trying to determine, you know, who, who has what. And really the thing you have to, I, in, what I look for in all these situations to even have a starting point is motivation. Okay. The, if a, if a good team is not motivated to play, in turn, that could keep the bad team around in the game. And all of a sudden, they get into the second half. It's like, wow, hey, we're right here. You know, we score one touchdown. We're tied. We score one touchdown. We're ahead. We're right in this game. And all of a sudden, you know, and especially if they're home, you know, all of a sudden, you know, they got a lot of motivation to keep playing. And the other team uh, hasn't given forth the same effort, you know, conversely, good teams, you know, what they need to do, you just go out and kick their butts. Okay. Early. Okay. You, you give them no reason to want to play because they don't, honestly, they probably really don't want to play anyways. So just take care of business. So that's how I look at those. And that's just some advice from, from me as in terms of how to look as, as the season close, you know, starts to come to a close. Good points, Doug. I mean, yeah, you want to go out there and kick their butts early, take their will away, and give them that mentality of here we go again. Um, that's the way to get it done. It sounds good in theory, but it doesn't always happen. And like I was discussing with Doug off air, you know, just because teams need to win the game more than their opponent uh, doesn't necessarily mean they're going to win or they're going to cover. And keep in mind, folks, sometimes teams in that situation, meaning um, they need to win the game more against a far inferior imp opponent, uh, bookmakers got a tendency to overinflate the line based on how they know the public is going to perceive that game. So just be careful in that regard. I'm not trying to talk you off of anything. Uh, there's a fine line between... Um, being trapped on an overinflated line and making the right call on a team that needs the game more than the other uh, and evaluating that team that's the underdog in that game. Have they shown an ability to play teams tough? Have they improved through the course of the year and leading up to that game? So uh, there's no easy way to come to a decision when it comes to sports betting, but there is ways and there is... Um, methods uh, to come to a more intelligent decision on a weekly basis. Anyway, Doug, what do you got for us? Well, we got a free play for you, and we're going to go out to the left coast where the Atlanta Falcons are taking on the San Francisco 49ers. Now, the 49ers, 
they are playing right now as I think many of us expected them to play from, from the start of the season. Okay. They, they've won four, uh, four out of five. Uh, they've covered four out of five at the same time. And that right now they're in the, in the playoffs. Okay. As, as we stand right now, or what is that expression? Uh, there's a, there's an expression. Uh, if the season ended today, that's what it was. So the, uh, some of that nonsense, but uh, no, the, so the, they're in good shape. Okay. So they, they just got to just keep continuing to take care of business. Now, Atlanta is actually the only game back. And so from, from Atlanta's point of view, you know, they're still in the playoff hunt. Okay. They've shown some basic improvement, especially after getting crushed by Dallas and new England in back-to-back weeks. And they've uncovered a running game. That's actually pretty potent. And because of that, that has made, I think, Matt Ryan uh, a better quarterback, giving him more options to look down the field. Their receiving core isn't great any longer, but just because of the running game, I think that's opened up some things for them. The, and looking at this game closer, nine points for, for Atlanta. That's an interesting number. And what's interesting to me about that, Ross, is that this season, the Falcons are six and two straight up and against a spread in games not played in Atlanta. Okay, so they've done a really good job. Conversely, you have the 49ers that are six and 15 uh, under Shanahan as home favorites. And if you drill down a little further uh, in games in Santa Clara, they're two and nine against teams with losing records, just like what the Falcons have. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take the Dirty Birds, Ross, plus the nine against the 49ers this weekend. Onions is what Bill Rafferty says, and that's what Doug Upstone has shown by taking the Atlanta Falcons plus the nine over them, them there, San Francisco 49ers. All right, I'm going to take a look and stay within that same division the 49ers are in, and that's the NFC West as Seattle travels to SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles to take on the Rams. The Rams are one of those teams that are in uh, advanced COVID protocol, so which means that they can only uh, get together virtually this week. And uh, also, they're coming off a big Monday night victory at NFC West division leader, Arizona and who they taking on they're taking on the bottom feeder in the NFC West which is uh, I don't think a lot of people predicted that before the season started the Seattle Seahawks are five and eight folks but don't tell Pete Carroll he still doesn't have a chance for an NFC wild card spot because in an NFC uh, position where you might still be able to get the number seven seed at eight and eight uh, Pete Carroll doesn't count his team out, and I don't. And it will reflect on the field this week, as uh, you know, they won their last two games. Now, granted, they 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 uh, beat Houston in their last game, which isn't a big uh, star on your forehead. Uh, but two games ago, they upset the San Francisco 49ers, and their offense, Doug, which has been dormant through stretches of this season which is a real head scratcher has shown signs of life over their last two games. I think Seattle, if they don't pull the upset here are going to, is going to take this game down to the wire against a LA Rams team, I think is in a very vulnerable spot here, Doug coming off a Monday night win against a division leader and having to deal with um, the situation or in, uh, being uh, meeting virtually, being an advanced protocol. I'm going to take Seattle here, go out on, uh, on a uh, limb here and take Seattle plus the four and a half at the LA Rams in Doug Upstone. Doug Upstone. He likes the Atlanta Falcons plus the nine and a half. Doug, what do you got going on this week? Uh, how you been doing and where could the good folks out there find you? Well, as I say every single week, Ross, you can go find me at uh, Doc Sports. It'd be the Doug Upstone page at Doc Sports. You'll see this mug as one of the 12 faces on the homepage. So just click on that. And that's exactly where, where I'm at. And then this, so this week, and since we're talking football, once again, I have a top play. It's going to be a six unit play. And this season in NFL weekly best bets, Ross, 11 and three. Okay. Just what the numbers say there that's uh, uh and in terms of the profit on those that's over five thousand dollars of profit based on units so it has my best bets have been killing it all season long and i got another one coming this sunday now of course along with that we have college football 
fired up um, starting on Friday with the, the, the uh, bowl games and what, 43 bowl games, I believe we got uh, yeah. this year. So last year in the abbreviated schedule, I was eight and four and picked up almost $2,000 worth of profit. So I'm excited to get this rolling. And uh, between uh, Friday and Wednesday, I have uh, six plays going and you can get the entire package, okay, of football, which, in, which will include the best bet of the NFL, and, and three other plays in the NFL for just $99 wow. complete. So wow. that's what I got going, Ross. How about you? What do you got going? That's with? a great deal. And 11 and three, which your uh, best bet, six units or more. Is that what that record was? That's exactly correct. Can you explain that? Uh, yeah, I've been good on those. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm teasing you because I used to hear your promos all the time and say, I'm 32 and 11, but I just... <laughs> Can't explain it. So I, I was wondering if you could, and you could explain. I, this I can, I can right now. There's other right. times I, even I wonder. All right. Fantastic. Anyway, all in good fun, Doug. Um, you can find me at rbwins.com. Folks, my NFL 14 and eight with my last 22. Uh, that's good for 64%. I'll have a 10 star top play on Saturday night in the NFL is there's a, Two games on Saturday. One I'm not going to touch. It involves the Cleveland Browns who have all kinds of COVID issues. And the other involves the New England Patriots in Indianapolis Colts game. Huge game with uh, AFC playoff implications. And I got a 10-star top play side in that game. And by the way, folks, my 10-star top plays, I can't explain it too. I'm 10-3 and three with my last 13 plays as far as my 10-star top plays in all sports. Speaking of all sports, I'm on a 50-32 and 32 run with in all sports, which is good for 62%. Um, also in college football, as Doug alluded to, bowl season is upon us. And uh, I finished the last six weeks of the college football season. I shouldn't say the last six weeks of the college football season. Over the last six weeks in college football, I've gone uh, pretty good, folks. 27 and 14, which is good for 68%. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. That's a lot of winning. You can find me at rbwins.com. I don't know why you wouldn't seek either one of our advice at this time of year. I know you're busy with uh, the holiday season upon us. Uh, you don't have a lot of time, but you're spending a lot of time with family. You're out Christmas shopping. You're at Christmas parties. Invest a little bit of money to make a lot with uh, Ross Benjamin at rbwins.com and Doug Upstone at docsports.com. Again, for Doug Upstone and Ross Benjamin, we like to wish each and every one of you a happy and safe holiday season. Until next Monday, for the both of us, we like to wish each and every one of you all the very best of luck. Take care, folks.